Hello. As we discuss today's topic of supplier diversity, we need to understand what it is and why is it important. Supplier diversity is a business practice that refers to the inclusion of businesses owned by diverse individuals or groups in the procurement of goods and services. A diverse supplier is generally defined as a business that's at least 51% owned and operated by individuals that's part of a traditionally underrepresented or underserved group. Common classifications are minority-owned business enterprises, MBEs, women-owned business enterprises, WBEs, and small business enterprises, SBEs. Businesses owned by other minority groups, such as LGBTQ, veterans, and persons with disabilities may also be considered diverse suppliers. So to share with us their knowledge on the process of supplier diversity, I'm pleased to welcome Ms. Suzanne S. Fiera, Chief Diversity Officer of the New York School Construction Authority, and Ms. Stephanie Burns, Vice President, Director of Workforce Development and Engagement. Thank you, Marjorie. Good morning, and welcome to Construction Inclusion Week. This morning, we have a very special guest. As Marjorie stated, this is Ms. Suzanne Vieira, the Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for the School Construction Authority here in New York. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Stephanie. It's a pleasure. Turner, I'm glad that you were able to work with us for this dynamic Construction Inclusion Week. This is something new that we're starting here at Turner and we wanted to make sure that we're engaging some of our clients and some of the agencies that we currently work with. And as we know, Turner and the SEA has had a very long relationship stemming back to the 90s. And one of the most common threads we have is our strong belief in supplier diversity and the MWBE program. Suzanne, can you tell me a little bit more about the SEA's program and all of the good things that you're currently doing and how it has changed over the years? Oh, absolutely. We have one of the best programs, I will say, not just citywide, but probably nationally. Our program is quite inclusive. We have a 30% goal. We mirror the city's MWBE goals by ensuring that our contractors also do a 30%. We, our goals are 30% prime, 30% subcontracting, as well as we have what's called a mentor program. Now that is the nationally recognized program that the SCA is known for. Our goals program, the 30%, we do very, very well. When it comes to prime contracts, last fiscal year that just ended June 30th, we did 26%, and that total over $640 million went to MWBE firms. Wow. Um, in addition to that, we did 34% subcontractors, subcontracting, which was about $175 million. So what does that say? Our program is dynamic. It works. It is a true reflection of what the SCA stands for. Our mentor program now is a small um, MWBE program. Smaller firms coming in can come into the SCA and do work in our mentor program. That is usually firms who are a couple of years in the business, have less than 2.16 annual gross sales. They come in, they learn, and they earn. What is special about that program? Exactly what I just said. You learn and earn at the same time. We provide um, training. We provide technical assistance. We have a loan program for mobilization course for our mentor firms to apply to. We have a bonding program. So we're teaching them and we're helping them earn bonding, not just at the SCA, but on the open market as they continue to grow. We provide them with one-on-one -on -one technical assistance. We, we've done a host of things. We have a supplement program for bike back office support where we actually train students to run the back offices of these small um, construction firms. So while they're learning, we're also providing them with workforce support. So our mentor program, last year we did about $81 million in our mentor program. But 
firms grow out of the mentor program and they go into the open market. This is why we've done 640 million total MWBs because our mentor firms are learning, growing, and bid an open market and winning in our open market against right. everyone else. Yes, and I have to say, like over the years, everyone knows in New York City that the SCA's mentorship program has been the number one mentorship where a lot of companies are now trying to mimic what you're doing because it has worked over the years. And I have to say, I give you kudos for working so hard to build and grow that mentorship program. So looking at the type of companies that are working for the SCA, can you talk a little bit about how do you select and where do these companies come from and how do they get into the work of either being pre-qualified for the SCA? So as you, as you know, working with Turner, mm -hmm. All companies doing work for the school construction authority have to be pre-qualified. That is the matter if you are minority or you are a majority firm. You come in, you're doing work in our schools, you are building schools for our kids. We provide, we ensure that you are, you have the integrity to do our work, you have the financial stability to do our work, as well as you have the references. We don't want brand new contractors who have never for instance, who have never done a kitchen or, or floor project to come in mm -hmm. and learn how to do that. So you have to come in with some level of references. So we require that you have a minimum of two references to enter our mentor program. Every other contractor, they, we require four references, at least $25,000 per, per reference, per contract um, over the last year. So we're looking for contractors who have actually started their business and they're actually doing the work. We do a lot of reference checks. We, we check to ensure that there's nothing negative. Their EMR is up to par. So you can't have a lot of accidents on your job. We're looking at to ensure that um, you are financially stable, you're financially solvent. You are not owed taxes to the IRS. And if you do, that you have a payment plan. So we're looking for solid companies to come in. Where do we find them? We find them from a host of different areas. We work with minority organizations, community organizations. We work with Turner. We work with everyone that we can to do networking events. Um, a couple of years ago, we were looking to, in, to, to increase our electrical contractors in the pool because we had a massive lighting program going on in all of the schools. You're speaking of hundreds of millions of dollars with the lighting projects that we were doing. So we were, so what do, how do we find electrical contractors? Well, you have to be licensed, a licensed electrician to do work at the SCA. Who licenses these contractors? So what did we do? We went to the Department of Buildings and pulled down their list of the vast thousands and thousands of contractors. And we actually went through all of these contractors, their areas, their names, and we pulled in about 40 new minority and women contractors. And let me just say to you, 100% of them got work. Oh, wow. Because it was so much work. We brought them in, they're already licensed. We, right. we got them pre-qualified, we got them certified. The SCA, we do our own certification. So mm -hmm. currently we have about a thousand firms certified and pre-qualified with us. What How does that long does mean? it take, Suzanne, to actually get someone certified and through that whole process? Because here at Turner, very similar, right? We have a pre-qualification to manage the risk, as you were saying, Absolutely. for contractors that are coming on board. What is the length of time does it take to have someone go through that? Well, it depends on how responsive the contractors are. You can come in and have all of your paperwork in order. You can provide us with everything we're asking for. You can have your references, your financials, and everything ready for us. And we could probably certify you and pre-qualify you in about a month. Or you can okay. come in and we're constantly asking you to explain things to us. And it could go on for about six months. So it depends on your ability to provide us with the necessary information. Because think about it. 
you are building schools for our kids, your kids, my kids, but my kid is really old now, but you know, <laughs> for the kids of New York City, for the kids of New York City. So we want you to be the correct fit. We want you to be a contractor with all of the requirements and meet all of the requirements to do that in a safe environment. So this is why the prequel, it's, it, it can be a lengthy process, but if you are a true contractor, and you really know your business, it can be smooth. And let me tell you, there is light at the end of that tunnel for you. And you can do phenomenal at the SCA. Our contractors, we have a graduation tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> our wow. Mentor, our mentor Who are you graduating tomorrow? We are graduating our mentor contractors. Our mentor okay. contractors have been in the program now for between four to six years, and they're moving into our open market. But we are graduating them and they're ready. These guys are ready to move to the next level. They've already received their bonding. They're already, they've already been bid in open market, many of them, mm -hmm. and women. So now it's just time to move them. And many of them don't want to go because the mentor program, it's a small right. team of contractors that's bidding pretty much against each other. We have about 160 contractors. But it's time okay. to move to bring in a new class because the sooner we move you to the next level, the sooner you get to bid up against the turners, the right. The right. So sooner this is where I'm going with you, right? right? So you and I basically speak the same language right. um, over the years, and you and I've grown up in this MWBE program through the city, the changes, right? Hearing how dynamic. Uh, that type of program is where you're graduating them. We're looking always for qualified MWBEs to grow our internal pool. So when you graduate, you can send them over to get pre-qualified. And this is how we can collaborate, right? We're trying Absolutely. to be inclusive and being in alignment with our clients and agency, it only helps us grow this MWBE program for everyone. I have to ask you, so during the pandemic, how did it impact SEA and your mentorship program and all of the subcontractors who were looking and eager to go to work? How did that impact them? Well, we understood almost immediately. And Stephanie, you know, you and I, you have to be in this business because it's in your heart. Yes. And so immediately we knew this was not good for our contractors, especially our mentor contractors. We have a loan program, right? So we have a loan program that we've been running for about 15 years. And so far we've done about 400 loans with, and we've done about $30 million worth of loans to mentor contractors with absolutely no defaults. We knew mentor contractors had outstanding loans. Everything right. came to a stop. Everything came to a stop. We knew our mentor contractors' payments came to a stop, work came to a stop. This could definitely mean the death of many of our contractors. Mm. How do and we had no idea how long this was going to be? So right. the first thing we did was that we contacted our loan, our sterling bank. We contacted the bank. We wanted them to freeze the loan payments because the contractors okay. can't continue paying on loans if they're not working. Right. So immediately they put a hole in our, we negotiated to put a hole in the loan payments. We then started to negotiate with, immediately we brought it to senior staff. If we don't get our contractors back to work, we're going to lose them. My team, my business development team started to individually reach out to every single contractor to make them aware of the PPP loans, to make them aware of all of the necessary services, all of the loans um, provided by small business services, all of the loans provided by the federal government. And then we started to engage them. We negotiated with um, Sterling Bank, who runs mm -hmm. our loan program, to ensure that once these loans became available, that our contractors were given priority treatment. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we started to work with them. We help them fill out applications for mm -hmm. these PPP loans. We help them understand where they can go. And once we were done with this, we had about 40 contractors who had gotten secured loans of over $3 million. So oh. then we decided, hey, these contractors can't repay these as loans. 
we need to ensure that these, these become grants and therefore they mm -hmm. don't have to be paid. So what did we do? We hired a CPA and an attorney to come in and work with our contractors who were provided these, these PPP loans to ensure that they understood the requirements to right. keep them right. as grants. And I believe we were quite successful with that. We hired a CPA to work with them. Then we started, then we, then we have a great president, our new president, Nina Kubuta. She's fabulous. Immediately, we started to speak about how do we save our contractors? What do we do? Right. They need to be priority as projects start back. They, we need to have everyone understand. So they started, she started to negotiate with OMB that the first projects we wanted to restart were the mentor contracts because yes. not only was that critical to our schools because we were doing a lot of the testing sites, we were doing a lot of the ventilations. We wanted those projects, we wanted our mentor firms to start working with us mm -hmm on many of those projects. So we wanted to keep them engaged as right. well as keep them working and payments to continue coming. Exactly. At the end of the day, we knew they were the most critical group. When we looked at who the crisis, the pandemic was impacting the most, it was impacting our communities the most. So Absolutely. beyond personal impact, we mm -hmm. needed to ensure that we could save our contractors as much as we can. So we went ahead and as work started to come up for the testing sites, the vaccination sites, we ensured that as many of our mental contractors were mm -hmm. included in those as subcontractors, as well as we ensured that our HVAC systems and our ventilation systems, it all, most of it went into our mentor program. So we kept them working. And then right. they went back, their projects were one of the first projects to come back on board. And to ensure that they understood how to restart their projects safely in mm -hmm. light of the COVID crisis and to ensure that they were following CDC guidelines. We then started to work with them and we brought in our safety department to do training on how they needed to run their projects now. Which was a lot different than prior, right? A lot different, a yes, lot the different. the safety aspect is huge. Right. Mm. Coming back to work in this new uh, dynamic of working under COVID and coming back yes. to the schools, knowing that our schools were going to open back up. I have to say that the SEA is a true community builder. Yes. Half that, as we spoke earlier, the SEA is providing schools where our children are being educated in every community here in New York City. So that is one of the largest, mm -hmm. um, you know, things that we talk about in terms of community-based, right? Everybody has a child that goes to school here in New York City. Absolutely. Public if you don't have one, one, you know one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So mm -hmm. your contractors now and a lot of the obstacles that they had to overcome, Suzanne, what is one of the things if you could just talk about maybe one where they be, overcame this obstacle of working through the pandemic, coming back online, trying to save their business. Can you give us one great story of a contractor who has really, really kind of leveraged themselves to move to the next level? So we've had, I can say we've had at least one really major contractor and we're, we're probably going to highlight them as one of our success stories in our graduation tomorrow was okay. that they not just understood that this crisis was going to be critical, not just to them, but to everyone else. But they, mm -hmm. they came forward, they, they ensured that they and their, their crew, they took out loans almost immediately to keep their workforce on board. They went ahead, they, they made sure that they had enough finances. And that's many times our contractors don't understand is to keep money in the business. So right. they ensure that, so they wanted to ensure that they retain their workers. And what did they do? They made themselves available to our emergency contractors. We have emergency CMs that run a lot of our emergency work. So they integrated themselves and they kind of re 
invented themselves to do emergency work on the fly because emergency work is we call you and we tell you, you've got two hours to get to the emergency. <laughs> and during COVID, everything was an emergency. So this contractor really stood out and did phenomenal and did quite well, not just at the SCA, but then they diversified their portfolio and they did work mm -hmm. at CDC, they did work at DCAS. They made sure that they were the go-to contractors and they delivered. That is excellent. And we see this contractor, someone that's going to move. As a matter of fact, we've just been talking to our prequal department to ensure that their bid ceiling increase significantly so they can bid open market. They can bid in our capital improvement program as they continue to grow. This is so great to hear, Suzanne, how much the SEA has grown its program. If you can just give us a caption before we are ready to sign off, what do you think the SEA will look like five years from now with their MWBE and their mentorship program? Because we're always looking for continuous growth for our MWBE community and having them totally engage with larger GCs like Turner. What could that possibly look like? So I think the SCS the model agency. We are currently, we are the go-to agencies for almost every city or state. And some um, outside New York, we've had calls from Pennsylvania, Texas, talking about our programs and having mm -hmm. us be that model. And I think we will continue to be the model because we're always re-engineering our program. We spend a lot of time, not just talking to us and our contractors, but talking to the turners of the world, asking them, so where do you see our problems? Where do you see our challenges? And every time they talk about a challenge, we address it. We've addressed the challenges of our mentor firms not growing fast enough. Mm -hmm. So our mentor program used to be just 1 million. Last year, we increased it to 2 million, and come July, we're going to increase it to 3 million. So all projects at the SCA, 3 million and under, will be mentor contracts. So we're growing the program. So I can see that a continuous growth. We are growing our smaller firms to our mentor firms to not just be successful in CIP, capital improvement, but to do capacity work. We have about currently, and we do it one contractor at a time. We have dynamic systems that we follow and we track almost everything that goes on in our programs and we track it contractor at a time. So any contractor can call us. We can pull them up and see exactly who they are, what they've done, where they're going, how large they are and where they need to go. So we're, we're, exactly. we're helping them see their future. We're helping them plan their business plans and, and mm. really think about their growth. And what mm. have we done? We've actually hired a large construction um, contractor to work with individual contractors to move them into capacity, to help them get ready to build new schools. And as a result of that, we've already had um, three of our contractors who were past mentor graduates doing pre-Ks. And we intend to see them move from not just pre-Ks, but new mm -hmm. schools as well. That's great. So, you know, I, I, I have a new title here at Turner, uh, which is workforce development. And over the years, for over 10 years, we have participated in your internship program. And, you know, that was really led by Ruby Saki. So yeah. I always like to say thank you, Ruby, for providing Turner with some great interns over the year, years. And just knowing that we're coming out of this pandemic, do you think that we're going to resume this internship program where we can continue to grow these youngsters that are coming up in the construction arena? Because that's what we're also looking for, younger people that have a desire to be in the construction industry. And you're providing that service to us by grooming those students each summer. So where is that going? So not only have we restarted it, we're thinking about where we're taking it. So mm -hmm. currently we are also expanding on that program. And speaking of workforce, not just our college internship program, we have expanded and will continue to expand. And as the pandemic, as we come out of the pandemic, which we are currently, we will, we will start hiring even more and more college interns to supplement our workforce. We have a high school program 
So we intend to fully restart our high school program where we hire 125 New York City high school students. But in right. addition to that, we are also training students to do workforce in our workforce development program. We have a new program called Opportunity Academy. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are actually training students to work in the back offices to run our mental contractors back offices because many of our contractors, one of their biggest challenges is they don't understand the paperwork government. Exactly, yes. yes. Government requires endless amounts of paperwork. <laughs> and I think this program, so we've started training these students on how to do the requisition, how to repair, how to prepare the submittals, how to do the, the milestones, how to, you know, how to submit your change orders. And then, right. we're, then we pay these students to work for our mentor firms for up to a year to help them strengthen their back office. That is so that right there we know is essential to a small business. Absolutely. The smaller Absolutely. the business, the harder it is for them to run the business side, the operational side of their business, plus be in the field. So that type of program is helping tremendously with our smaller contractors that are out there. And so this is so today, important for, for workforce diversity and inclusion. So important because, you know, we go out and we look not just for the brightest and the best students, but the most diverse set of students we're bringing in. And I think that is also one of the important things when we talk about workforce diversity and inclusion is to bring them in young, bring them in while they're still in college and then retain them as they graduate. Well, we hinted at the title, not even hint, mm -hmm. Construction Inclusion Week, where right. we all striving to be very inclusive and diversity right now is speaking to everyone, right? And we wanna make sure that everyone understands the purpose of SCA, which you have provided us with a wealth of information today. You've spoken about your youngsters that are coming into the industry. We're looking to continue our working relationship with SCA. Hopefully we'll have some upcoming Work. And I want you to know that we are definitely in alignment as this industry continues to grow. We want to know, you know, in the next couple of years where we're going with our program. And you're going to hear a lot more about that. So I just want to say to you, Suzanne, thank you so much for sharing all of this information with us today. We have a very broad audience, and I hope that they have learned a lot more about the SCA. So on behalf of Turner Construction, we would like to say thank you for joining us for Construction Inclusion Week. And you have a good day. I appreciate you being here. Thank, thank you, Stephanie. You too. Great speaking to you again. Yes, yes.